is CJC1295 the same as ipamorelin? Now this is a great question because sometimes they're used interchangeably, but actually they're two separate molecules. And in this video, I'll deconstruct the difference between CJC1295 and ipamorelin. I'll talk to you about what each one of these growth hormone releasing peptides do when it comes to growth hormone pulsatility. And we'll also talk about what the best utilization of it is. We'll get into some of the phase two clinical trials that were done. I'll talk to you about why it was stopped. So let's jump in. I'm Reagan Archibald, founder of Ageless Future. I want to help you become as healthy as possible in the shortest amount of time possible. And one of the things that we do in order to help you get there is create these videos so that you can learn on your own exactly what these molecules called peptides can do for your health. The other thing that I believe in is I believe your health is contagious. And so if there's little things I can do to help lead you on the course to better health, I think we all make the communities we live in just a little bit better. So CJC and ipamorelin, two different things are working on two separate pathways in your pituitary. Your pituitary is this little gland in the middle of your brain and it's the orchestrator. It listens to the hypothalamic pulse and so the hypothalamus is like the executive and then the pituitary gland is like the office manager that gets all of the functions done and it manages all of the inputs and output. So CJC1295 works directly as a growth hormone releasing Socratagogue. Remember, peptides are just signals. It's the new medicine. Peptides just change the signals in your body so that your body can perform on its own. It's not like growth hormone where a growth hormone comes in and just does the work. It actually allows your brain and your body, your pituitary gland specifically, to trigger your body's own production and release of these very specialized molecules or hormones. Ipamorelin works on the ghrelin pathway. Ghrelin is known as the hunger hormone. And interestingly enough, ipamorelin and CJC1295 used together causes a diminishing of hunger. You're still gonna have more hunger because you're getting growth hormone and your body probably needs more protein, so make sure that you've got the right diet, nutritional, strategy. The reason why a lot of times these are interchangeable, people, you know, CJC, 1295, ipamorelin, because they're often stacked together for two reasons. One is for the hunger that I just spoke about. The second reason is because CJC, 1295, it gives you a little longer of a pulse of growth hormone before somatostatin kicks in and brings it back down because you don't want your body making growth hormone all the time. But the secondary reason why they're used interchangeably is because ipamorelin gives that pulse up to five to seven times greater of a pulse than if you were to use CJC1295 alone. So this peptide, CJC1295 specifically, came out of Montreal, Canada, and uh, never became an approved drug. And what they were doing is they were combined a drug affinity complex. This was a growth hormone releasing peptide and it had 29 amino acid chains. The DAC that they stacked on it allowed for a longer pulse of growth hormone. What we've learned now is that you just want a quick pulse of growth hormone and then you want it to subdued because bad things happen if growth hormone is overexpressed. But in one of the studies they had, this was around 2005, there's two randomized, double-blinded, placebo-controlled uh, trials and they were measuring IGF-1 and growth hormone. And anytime you have an expression of growth hormone, it's IGF-1 or insulin-like growth factor that does all the work. Your liver starts pumping out the IGF-1 and then the IGF-1 helps stabilize some of the insulin responses. It also helps add to BDNF expression in the brain so your brain works better, your muscles recover more, you seem to get better deep sleep. But in the study, one of the participants, and this was for lipodystrophy. So lipodystrophy is where we accumulate fat in our bellies, specifically around the organs. And so in this lipodystrophy trial, one of the uh, participants died of coronary arterial disease. It was a plaque rupture that led to a stroke. And investigators, when they looked at it, they probably not related to the drug itself, but still the scientists there, they terminated that study 
as a precaution. And that's not saying that CJC 1295 comes without risk. Everything that you're putting into your body has a risk associated with it. You can balance the risk and benefits profile in several ways, but one of the risks that you're going to have, and I recommend you steer clear from this, is if you do seem to have a lot of allergies or your body is more likely to have like a histamine response. So if you've been exposed to mycotoxins like mold exposure, lived in moldy buildings, if you've had you know, chronic Lyme disease, you've got autoimmunity, be very careful on using CJC 1295. But warning for those of you who don't, and uh, you're working with a doctor and they're outlining how to use this, you could get a flushing effect. And one thing that happens to me is if I use CJC at night, I get the flushing effect and it kind of wakes me up. And I'm like, ah, oh, I'm supposed to be sleeping because you want to use this peptide, CJC Ipamorelin, use them in a fasted state, ideally 90 minutes after you've eaten and 30 to 60 minutes before bed. Or I like using it in the morning because it gives me, it wakes me up and uh, great to use after a workout or even before, because you're going to get growth hormone pulses after a hard workout, after fasting, or when you're asleep. And ideally go to sleep around 9.30. If you're using CJC Ipamorelin, you don't wanna be partying all night uh, because it's that growth hormone, the deep sleep that happens before midnight for most people. I know there's circadian rhythms that are totally different, but for the majority of humans, it's that early to bedtime is where you get the most deep sleep and the greatest pulse of growth hormone. And so all we're doing with peptides is peptides are just a gentle knock on the door and they remind genes how to express health again. And so as we age, our growth hormone starts to decline. And so these peptides are ways that you can turn on that natural expression. CJC Ipamorelin, one of the reasons why they are used interchangeably is because of the ability for them to get, like I mentioned before, greater pulsatility of growth hormone and for the hunger profile. We found that using it without DAC, if you have the choice, is a much better option. But once again, as you work with the team, as you find out if this is right for you, you want to assess the risk profile of this, but it does seem to be a phenomenal peptide. And of all the growth hormone releasing peptides, tessamorelin is probably my number one favorite. It does have FDA approval for certain conditions. CJC is a very close second. I like cycling these at different times of the year. It makes a huge difference in my energy levels, my mental clarity, my body's ability to recover. And I always use it with Ipamorelin. Ipamorelin is uh, cleaner, probably one of the safest growth hormone releasing peptides, not approved for any conditions, but does seem to help curb the hunger and help express growth hormone in unique ways. And if you want to go deeper and find out what is best for you, all you need to do is go to agelessfuture.com, book your free health span assessment, talk to my team. We are a hospitality company that specializes in healthcare. They'll take great care of you. I'm Reagan Archibald. I'll see you on the next show.